Honey, wear my socks. Honey, wear my socks. Honey, wear. What the? F Hello again, everyone. This is Bionic Slime. I'm your online voice for reviews of your choice. Today we'll be doing my very first requested review. This, this request comes from Pro Killer Ninja. And uh, the anime heat movie he has requested me to do is Howl's Moving Castle. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the director, Hayao Miyazaki. I mean, of course, he is one of the most infinite badasses of all animation history, creating some of the most kick-ass, memorable, wonderful, awesome animated films of all time. I think he's a genius and creates some of the best anime masterpieces in existence. So I was quite interested in doing this review for Pro Killer Ninja. I just wanted to apologize though in advance so that I said I would get this out a little sooner and unfortunately I've taken a little too long in doing that, mostly due to real life complications. So I apologize to Pro Killer Ninja for that and uh, hope you don't mind the review coming a little late. As I said, I'll be reviewing Howl's Moving Castle. It is brought to you by Walt Disney Studios and Studio Ghibli. It was directed and written by uh, Hayao Miyazaki and stars the vocal talents of Emily Mortimer and Gene Simmons as young Sophie and Grandma Sophie, Christian Bale as the wizard Howl, Lauren Bacall as the Witch of the Waste, uh, Billy Crystal as Calcifer the Fire Demon, and Josh Hutcherson as Markle. The plot of Howl's Moon Castle. Set in a fictional place where science, magic, and apparently world war type tactics are being all mixed together in one fantasy land, the story follows a young girl named Sophie, a plain, ordinary dormouse type person who works in her mother's hat shop and leads a very uninteresting life, until one night she is visited and has her youth stolen by a bulbous Jabba the Hutt wannabe called the Witch of the Waste, who steals her youth and turns Sophie into an 89-year-old woman. Unable to live life as this, she goes out into the, to the lands of the Waste in order to find the wizard Howl, who she hears is very powerful but also steals the hearts of beautiful young women. She finds that Howl is living in a mobile mechanical castle which is powered by Calcifer, a smart-mouthed little fire demon who operates and controls all the heat and the castle itself. Along her way, in her journeys with Howl, she meets a walking scarecrow named, named Turnip, a uh, strange dog named Hing, I believe, and a young boy named Markle who serves as the helper and assistant to Howl, all in the hopes of returning Sophie's youth and possibly ending the horrible war that has been conflicting Howl and the rest of the nation. Review of the plot. Uh, as always, Hayao Miyazaki ha likes to have characters that have some sort of plot or problem driving them into their into their story. In Princess Mononoke, it was Ashitaka being cursed by the virus that was going to consume his life. And in this case, it's Sophie trying to get her youth back and become a young woman again. Uh, the whole concept of this whole moving castle thing is pretty much the whole enjoyment factor of the film, because unlike the rest of his films they, that encounter various magical creatures, all of the magical happenings seem to happen around, in, or near the moving castle. And despite the fact that, that the castle looks very cruddy and garbage heap-like, it turns out to be the most interesting part of the entire f story, because there's so much going on in there, from simple to supernatural, that you keep finding yourself drawn into this little gang of people who have been met under unusual circumstances through magic or mishap, and it, ma it takes the story into interesting places, particularly when you talk about the self-discovery stories between Sophie and Howell. It's very simple, much like all of this stuff, and it usually escalates into something greater, and here it does. And it's nice to have such a unique little setting constantly tie everyone together. I thought that was a nice concept to use. Review the characters. Um, Sophie, as I said, is a very plain, boring person. She wasn't actually even interesting until she became an old woman, because her manners became much more sharp, her personality became much more sharp-witted, and she became a much more interesting foil for the very interesting character of Howl, who's probably one of the weirdest characters in Miyazaki's universe. He's extremely powerful and uh, very light-hearted, and yet he's very lazy and very cowardly. He seems to not want to do jack shit all the time, yet he possesses the magic to be a great, great wizard. I particularly love how Sophie just manages to move right in 
to the house and just takes her takes up shop so easily, accepting her life as becoming this cleaning woman in, in this place. And the characters, Markle and such, all seem to enjoy her too. But the, probably the best part, I think, in terms of the characters comes from Calcifer. I don't care if anyone prefers the subtitle over the, of the dub. I really don't think the Japanese version of Calcifer can really match the sharp tongue of Billy Crystal. He really managed to pull off an excellent performance as the fire demon. He's, only the, he's like the only real big name in this film, aside from Christian Bale, and he really does a great job providing some smart mouth comedic relief as this little feisty fire demon who just basically bitches and moans about everything. Christian Bale is excellent here. This is one of the performances I loved best about him, and even though it's only a voiceover, I really think this is a great character for and it makes him capable of using a more lighthearted voice instead of his usual dark, brooding voice as he's done in the Batman films. And I thought he gave a great performance here. Uh, Lauren Bacall, very good as Witch of the Waste. Um, Blythe Danner, the mother from the Meet the Parents film, she does a very good job as Madame Sullivan. And uh, even Crispin Freeman, who's done uh, such roles as he- 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 Sings Elucard and Zelgadis from Slayers, comes into this film. A very small role, but a very important role, actually. So we got a really good, well-rounded cast here. I was very surprised with the range of the characters' vocal talent and their delivery of some of their lines, and the fact that they could associate such fond memories with these voices. And I think they do a much better job of attaching your identity to these voices than was done in Spirited Away, which is a fantastic wonderful film, don't get me wrong, but I felt that these voices kind of sunk in a little more successfully with conjoining with their characters. View the animation music. As always, animation is absolutely freaking beautiful. It's gorgeous beyond gorgeous. I mean, there's, as always, Miyazaki never fails to give you the most wondrous eye candy that will shove down your throat and just explode you with wonder from within. There's so many visuals, so many unusual creatures. You've got the Witch of the Waste's henchmen. you got the, the changing rooms and, and, and the magic of the moving castle. you got the weird bird bomb things, the planes that have teeth and shit. It's so weird to describe that. It, it, it's just so Miyazaki. He never fails to pique your imagination, and, he, and his imagination never fails to impress or amaze us. And that's one of the things that makes his films quite so magical, both in literal and external, as that he never fails to give you a visual feast of, of, dis- of displayed animation. Music was good, very beautiful, very nice and sweet and soft and me- me- melodic, or melody, I don't know how you'd say that, uh, but very good. Um, I was, it wasn't as different as much as the other films. It all kind of felt... The same in this film, at least, anyway. But that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. However, speaking of bad things, we come now to the criticisms of the film. And unfortunately, unlike most Miyazaki films, there's a lot I have to complain about here. One of the biggest things that pretty much pissed me off the high hell was the fact that the whole reason Sophie was going through this mess was that she was trying to become young. This isn't spoiling anything, but at certain parts in the film, she becomes young again. And the thing that bothers me is the most is that she doesn't even acknowledge it. This is her freaking goal, and several times she becomes young, but she doesn't even act like, oh, I'm young again. It's like, what? That was the whole point of you doing this. Why are you not acknowledging it? It's not something you just roll over and ignore. That's a big important reason. It's, I mean, in Princess Mononoke and Spirited Away, the main characters, Ashitaka and Shihiro, both had long driving goals. Shihiro wanted to get her parents back. Ashitaka wanted to cure himself with that lethal virus. And here, Sophie wanted to get young again. But she gets it and she doesn't acknowledge it. They don't even explain how it works. She has it, it's on. It's on or off. I mean, what the hell? It's just like a flickering light switch. It's, I mean, it's like, it's like Miyazaki just said, oops, I forgot the plot, but oh look, pretty pictures. And I'm like, that's just bad writing. Also, the, the explanation for the war that comes up, it comes up the last, like, three seconds of the movie, and it just felt so rushed. It's like, why did you bother saying it now? It just felt so cliched and une- ineffective. It's just like, you had this war going on, they're questioning it, and even they go, it's like, whose destroyer is that? You know, which side is it? Does it really matter? Yes, it does, because we don't even know why the frick they're fighting in the first place. The other thing that pissed me off, what the hell were they doing to Witch the Waste? She was made out to be the villain, and then halfway through the film, she becomes retarded. It's the best way to describe it. And they kind of accept her being along with the group. Like, she goes, oh, she's just, like, you know, kooky, eccentric Aunt Alice. No. No, she's not. The Witch of the Waste is a bulbous bitch who stole her youth and has probably ruined the lives of many people, and we're just accepting her like it's Lottie frickin' Da? Come on, what kind of writing is that? And that just bothers me. She was a pain in the ass. There's nothing nice about her. There's nothing even nice gained by her having her alongside. She's more of a pain in the ass than a help. 
Bottom line, Howl's Moving Castle is a wonderful movie in terms of animation, but unfortunately, out of all the other Miyazaki films I've seen, this definitely has to stink down to be the lowest one. The animation is beautiful, but you got a lame character here who doesn't even get interesting until she gets old. To completely forgets about the whole plot, it's why she's doing it. There's so many inconsistencies and questions that are left unanswered. The Witch of the Waste is just accepted when she's clearly a bad guy and, and it's treated like that. And it's like everyone acts like, oh, it's nothing big. No, it's a big deal. If she's there, if you forget about your youth, that's a problem. You just basically forgot why the film was made, and that is what really bothers me. Bottom line, Howl's Moving Castle gets an unfortunate two and a half stars out of five stars. Well, thank you all for listening. Hope you've enjoyed my review. This has been Bionic Slime, and bye for now.